Is your bathroom really old, but you're a little short on the money to fix it up? Well, I'm gonna teach you the tricks to updating that nasty vanity countertop while staying way under budget. Stay to the end, you'll wanna see the final look. Look at these bad boys. <laughs> We're gonna fix these right up, man. Wow, look at, this one must have had daylight in it. Cultured marble is made out of epoxy. These need some work. Goodness gracious. Silicone is a repellent to epoxy, so I'm gonna scrape that off as my first step. And most of the silicone is just right here. I'm just using a flat edge blade to get my glue off. All right, we've scraped off most of that glue and paint and all that bad stuff. The next step is TSP. That's trisodium phosphate. This is a substitute, no rinse edition. So you can pick this up at a hardware store. You're gonna heavily saturate your existing countertops, let it sit, and then just scrub it off with a microfiber rag. And then we're ready for the next step, which will be some Bondo. I'm gonna fix a couple little chips and uh, you know, edge got hit. I'm gonna fix that with Bondo. Then we're gonna sand that back and apply the bonding primer. Scotch Bright, just scrub it out some. Just scrub the heck yep. out of it. This TSP is a very important step whenever going on site and going over existing. Cause there's grease and grime like crazy. Oh, especially by your, your oven. Oh yeah. Often. So I noticed it's got a little, little chip in here, but you won't yep. see that once they- No, uh, we're gonna fill it. Oh, are we? Okay. With one of your favorite uh, smells Bondo. in the entire world. Bondo's my favorite. When you're done scrubbing, yep. I'm gonna hand you this microfiber rag. Okay. And wipe them down and then we'll, we'll isopropyl wipe. That's probably more than we need. I'll put my fingers on them there. Yep. That's what's nice about redoing these, right? Because, I mean, what's the cost to buy these things? Well, there's minimums. Like, if you were to go to Home Depot, oh. I did this for a customer, and there's a minimum. It would probably be $550 minimum. $550? A piece. And it's only going to cost the homeowner $500 for this, right? Yeah, nothing, right? We'll need some TSP. We'll need some bonding primer, the smallest amount of Bondo. And then we're going to undercoat from there. And then the stone spray. Okay. And then uh, clear epoxy. We need a half gallon of epoxy. That's a little bit over 50 bucks. The spray is like eight or nine bucks. So somebody, if somebody was going to do this professionally, and that's all they did were these, yeah. you, you could do well with you that. You could do well with that. Yeah. So doing it yourself, you're talking with all, everything you possibly could need. I'm going to say a hundred bucks in materials to go do these for a customer. I would have to measure them out, but again, you, you do have minimums to show up. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be probably three, 400 bucks easy. And the amount of work to do this is not much at all. Well, and then they, they get exactly what they want too. Mm -hmm. The Bondo's cured up. It's nice and dry. It's time for the next step. I'm going to sand that back flat with 120 grit sandpaper. Then we're going to use that same sandpaper to rough up my edges and the surface in the sink bowl and the backsplash. And it's time for the next step, which is the bonding primer. You always want to use bonding primer when going over slick surfaces. No need to use bonding primer when going over wood or MDF. Well, so far, this okay. is a pretty easy process, Mitch. Yeah, it is. Gosh. I love making projects with you, Ken. Well, that's just because you're not a really good judge of character. <laughs> <laughs> or you just accept my poor work standards. <laughs> Do you want me to go thicker on this, uh, these, uh... No, thin's fine. Thin to win on this. Even, even on the scratches? Yep. So yeah, your brother-in-law really liked our uh, gray spray on vanity that I did on site. So we're gonna do a similar style to that one, but a little bit lighter on our custom undercoat color. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white and black undercoat to make a subtle gray. Doesn't matter what my brother-in-law wants. Ooh, it's what the brother-in-law's wife wants. My, yes, my sister. Your sister. Yes. She's not, she's not in town, so. Oh boy, she gets what she gets and she doesn't throw a fit. You're, you're good for now, but when <laughs> she gets back, so we can do another coat on this mix? Yep, real thin. All right. Just let to me, be safe. Let me know when, when you're ready, I'll do the bowls. We're pretty much there. Okay. Round two. Same, uh, mm -hmm. same deal? Yep, thin to win. What are we doing now? Oh, we're making a custom undercoat color. Oh. So you could go get some, you know, bare paint and primer in one that has ammonia in it. You gotta go to the Home Depot. We're just gonna make our own gray out of a little white and a little black undercoat. And yeah, we don't need a whole bunch of paint, do we? No. You know, hang on to that. Mm -hmm. Psychedelic. Let's go with that color. Yeah, that's cool. The next step, two coats of our gray undercoat and then we're followed with a stone spray. The undercoat is dry. We're gonna do a real fine light hand sanding just to knock down any high points. Yeah, and what are you using for a sandpaper mix? 220. 220. 
Oh, that is light. It's isn't super it? light. Just kind of getting rid of any brush strokes. I'm the. I barely have oh, to yeah. do anything. Yeah, I'm impressed at how well the. Uh, this is bonded to that. I mean, you can tell it's just really yeah, stuck. It's married to each other. So we're ready for it. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to make. And the customer went with three stone sprays, which is going to be awesome. It's a 3D textured spray that you lay it down and then you put clear epoxy over it. And it's a really gives us some depth pretty here. countertop that is you know beginner level anybody could do this this part because you're just putting clear epoxy on when people start mixing in metallics and dyes they can get intimidated so if you're new to epoxy go with a stone spray it is insanely easy it doesn't get quicker or easier than the stone spray i'm gonna hit my edges and backsplash first so the proper way to test these guys out you want to give them a good shake all right we're spraying good that's nice and uniform and now short burst. You never want to do this on the stone spray. It's going to be way too much. Real light, short bursts. And I'm going to start on my edge. And often, you don't need much on the field after you've hit all that. So we're going to layer it. I'm going to start real light and try to go uniform. And we could always add more stone spray. If you want a little more black, you can add that. You know, it looks good just like that, Mitch. It really does. You could almost just leave it that way. You can see how far away I am, guys. I'm probably 20 inches away or so. Oh, even maybe further, huh? Yeah, further. Some guys have a hard time with distances. I'm, I'm blind in one eye, so my depth perception is awful. And that's a true story. <laughs> All right, that was the black. Let's go gray. Gray. Gray stone, stone spray. <clears throat> I'm trying to just look at the project as a whole and get a uniform coating. It looks better already, in my opinion. This is a different color, and I like it. Yeah, it's subtle, though. It's less bold, right? Yeah. Correct. But it adds mm. a great detail. It's a different it's, color on there. It's beautiful. It is. It really is nice. Great I'm excited job. To, I'm excited to see this on there. Which color is that? This is uh, stone. No. Oh, they'll say oh. stone. Bleach stone. OK. That's where you find out. Yep. What's well, that gray stone, right? Yeah, I guess. This is, <laughs> I can't read it without my glasses stone. <laughs> Welcome to Geriatric Hour here at Stone Cook. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> All right, going to Bleach Stone. Ooh, yeah. That's going to add some white. Seriously, great color selection. And I've never used these three together. I remember a piece you did with three different sections or four different sections with a diagonal yeah. line across them? Yep. That was, yep. <clears throat> that was, uh, that was pretty cool. And he used, I think he used this kind of spray, right? Yep. Yep, I was, I was showcasing oh, the different undercoats. That's right. And then the different stone sprays that that's you can right. do, but I never combined any. You know, I like the, I like the depth of this. Yeah. Even, even without the epoxy on it, it, it looks deep. People are going to not know that this is ancient culture marble. No way. I think we're good on the spray. What do you think? I, I, you I like, do too. You want to take a picture, show your wife? Yeah, I love it. Love and it. then she, yeah, then she could say, you know, darker or whatever. Well. Folks, that's it. That's as simple as the stone spray is to apply. It doesn't get any easier than that. My customer took a photo showing his beautiful wife if she likes him or not. And now's the time we could add more stone spray. Or if she doesn't like him, we're gonna paint him over and start scratch. So, crossing my fingers. Hi. Hi. Thanks for helping. You're very welcome. Now, can you see it? Oh, pretty. I like it. You should get You want them darker or you like it? I, I that was a little Those one. Those good, don't they? Yep. Yeah. That was the yellow one. Yeah, I think what you did a great job. Oh. All right. Well, tomorrow we'll put some epoxy on it and sh and we'll show you the, how they look tomorrow with the resin on there. All right. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank All right. You. Customer approved, guys. We're going to let this dry. And I'll be back tomorrow for the next step. Bonus content. Look at these bad boys. That is absolutely beautiful. I love the uh, the blue, the color in there. Yeah, right. Luke poured the blue vein, and that's the vein we poured first. That's it. So we poured that, and then just started layering up the the white marble because that's the original gangster color of Stone Coat. Yeah. Plus, it needs to be light behind our set, so the reflections. I think you were inspired yeah. in Texas. I was. You saw that video. It's everything's bigger in Texas. It is, <laughs> including the epoxy foam walls. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Pretty cool though, right? Yeah, that's beautiful. When do you when do you put them up? Tomorrow. This is fresh top coat. This area has so much room for activities in it now. 
Like we could play the ping polka. pong. We do the polka. The polka. You know, I this thought be, we were gonna do like great. the touch of, from that Michelangelo oh. painting. When you're like you're oh, the yeah. angel or whatever. That was actually pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the stone spray can looks super good. It's nice and dry. We let these sit overnight because we did these at the end of the day. That stone spray, uh, if you're waiting on site, it's about an hour to dry before you can go and go ahead and mix up epoxy. We're gonna go thinner coats. I want to do two coats. I'll probably okay. mix up two ounces per square foot. The reason I do thinner coats on this particular epoxy technique is because of the backsplash, we're gonna coat it, it's vertical, it's gonna be thin, plus we applied a little texture. So to make that a nice smooth coating, it's best to do two coats of clear epoxy before doing the ultimate top coat. So today we're just gonna do a thin coat, no need to use the notch trial, I know how much to mix, we're just gonna use our gloved hands, it's super All easy. Right. All right, let's first hit our sinks, and what I do with that, I just kinda brush the epoxy because some of the epoxy here will then begin to Sure. to self-level down, and then uh, we'll just kind of brush that smooth, brush the backsplash. You de-shed? I did. What a guy. The best awesome. I could. Let's do this. It's like, there we go. It's like clear, cool paint is all we're doing here. Oh yeah. Just gonna go thick on that, right Mitch? Yeah, it doesn't, yep. Yeah, even coating, a lot of it's gonna self-level. Right. We're doing thin, thin coats. Look at how that makes that. Instantly. Color come out of there. And it's cool. okay if, the epoxy gets in your drain, don't even worry about it. What I do afterwards is I'll grind all the epoxy drips okay. out of the bottom uh -huh. of the drain and you're good to go. And it's okay if a little gets in your hole there, the drain overflow. There you go. A couple blobs, blob of rooskies. Ooh, and we got our backsplash too. So that's another pro tip on backsplash when you're doing this. Um, do it first? I do it, and but then I'll keep brushing it up and then and then I keep kind of feathering it as it pulls up down here at the bottom. Okay. Just feather that out a little bit. And we want to make sure we get the edge, right? Yeah, got to go do our edges. And don't forget the top of your backsplash either. I love the uh, the little soap dish. Uh, yeah, me too. So, okay, that's another thing. Kind of do this with it. Yeah, get the, get the excess as, out As you self-level, kind of get it out or we'll fill her up. That's why we also don't want to do a real thick coat is because the, is, you have the high points here and all that. My edges seem to be good. And yeah, coat them real good and then we'll come rub the bottoms. Oh. Kind of coat the bottom of those edges too. Map gas, you know what map gas is versus propane? No. This burns hotter. Oh. It's usually plumbers use it for doing copper. Okay. Uh, map gas is the yellow bottles. Our Home Depot was sold out completely of the mini green propane bottles. You could still use map gas, but what you're gonna wanna know is it's hotter. So you're gonna, I'm gonna pull my torch a little bit further away and keep it moving a little bit faster. That's all, all, that's the only difference. It burns a little hotter. It does the same thing to remove the bubbles. So I'm gonna sweep the surface. There's no need to sweep the backsplash or your edges. That's so thin, the bubbles release right on out of there. So I'll usually torch the top three times. Okay. I let it cool in between. So go ahead and hit yours and then I'll hit mine next. Yeah, a little bit of, I got some more bubbles, should I just leave yeah, it? Yeah, we'll hit it again. Okay. And sometimes what you're seeing there is the high points oh, of, the, right. of the stone I think, spray. I think we might be. Yep, that is. That's why I like to do the two coats. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's perfect depth. Good job there. Mine's more full. The apprentice <laughs> has, you're a good young Padawan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Play Torch it. time. Torch off. Torch on. This is done, man. This step is done. What you got going on here is just the high points of the stone spray. So the next one will really smooth it out. It will. We'll come back tomorrow. I'll lightly sand with 220 once this dries. This will be dry in 18 to 24 hours. I'll come back. I'll lightly sand with 220 grit. Do the same, same exact process. All right, guys. Tomorrow I'll be back for the next step, which is one more clear coat, and then it's the ultimate top coat. Then it's install. Looks great. Boom, way faster than the seven week wait your brother-in-law had, right? Yeah. Sweet, and for less money. Yes. Coat one is dried perfectly. I'm gonna lightly sand with 220, clean the dust, and then apply coat number two. Just a super, super light scuffing is all that's necessary. This is gonna create a nice mechanical bond for the next coat of epoxy on edges and surface. All right, I'm putting another coat on. So this fly that's stuck in here, that's because we left the door open. We let flies in the shop, just sand it on out. I'm gonna sand him all the way gone. 
And look closely because their legs will stick around there, man. Gone. We're good. Next coat, never know that the fly took a kamikaze trip into the countertop. I'm gonna get rid of that dust with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. So the stone spray is 3D, it leaves a little texture. Uh huh. So especially on your vertical surfaces, that's your thinnest part of epoxy. So I can subtly feel my texture still. It is coated, but I'm gonna build up with another layer. We're gonna do another layer of clear stone uh, art coat. We need like half a bucket, not much. So grab some gloves, I'll get the epoxy and then we'll meet back and apply. All right, let's mix up. What part first? Always want to go with B. Why? Because it is a little thinner and you want to pour A, which is a little bit thicker. Second, so the big old blob ain't chilling on the bottom. If you pour part A in first, it's not the end of the world. It'll still mix. Just be sure to fully mix. Midway through, paint stick. Scrape the side of that bucket really good. You're going to get any unmixed epoxy clinging to the sides into your mixture. And then I scrape my stick and now we're good to go. Mix one more time for another 30 to 40 seconds. I'm gonna dunk my brush and just start painting the sink bowl and paint the uh, backsplash. But you don't wanna get it too thick where it starts running down the... It, it's okay if it runs. We have this plastic down, it's gonna run. Uh -huh. So give it a good coating. Got it. Knowing that, yes, it is going to self-level down, but that is why we're doing the second coat on here. Because your vertical surfaces are your thinnest part of epoxy. So we're going to build up a good coating. So I just kind of brush it on, starting at the top, and it'll run down. As the epoxy thickens, maybe 45 minutes from now, I'm going to come in here after it's kind of self-leveled a lot more and just scoop it out down the drain. So this stays low, because if you keep filling, it's gonna wanna fill up and become level. Mm -hmm. Same with our, with our edges. We kind of have a raised edge. Um, that's another reason we're going thin. We kind of want, he wanted to keep that no drip detail. So if I just poured a huge amount of epoxy, it's gonna fill this puppy all the way up and you'll lose that detail. And it's gonna come back. This is just knocking down ridges, adding more resin. Gravity's gonna take it down, but I can already tell it's a much thicker coat than the first one. So guys, that's that being said, let's say you've done your two coats on your stone spray vanity and you still feel a little bit of the bumps from the stone spray in your sink bowl on your backsplash, mix up another thin coat and apply it. And don't forget, you're also gonna be applying the ultimate top coat, which can hide a little bit of that. All right, this one's coated. Now that the air is out of the epoxy, all that's left to do is let it cure. This will be cured and dried to the touch in 18 to 24 hours. And then we'll be back for the final step, which is applying the ultimate top coat. Until then, enjoy your day and we'll see you later. You got this. All right, I'm gonna use the metal fiber sanding disc to quickly take care of these drips. You could also use a random orbital sander with probably 60 grit sandpaper. That's gonna be a little bit slower, but that'll make quick work of those drips as well. The epoxy drips have been removed. It's time for the ultimate top coat. Step one, when applying the ultimate top coat, we're gonna lightly sand the epoxy with 220 grit sandpaper, clean the dust with 91% isopropyl alcohol. Real light scuff is all that is needed and hit your edges too, guys. Two coats of clear epoxy was the right call for these verticals and the backsplash just because we added texture with the stone spray. It's real minimal texture, but it's texture nonetheless, so you need to overcome that and cover it. The tools of the trade for applying the ultimate top coat. I like these nine inch little guys here. They do a great job of evenly applying wet and dry rolling the ultimate top coat. For your sink bowls, you wanna go mini roller. This is four inches long. It's still the quarter inch microfiber that leaves a really sprayed on like finish, but this is able to hit those sink bowls much easier than long ones. So it's time to mix. The ultimate top coat is a two to one mixture. So we have graphs on the side of our graduated cylinders that tell you exactly how much to mix up. So I brought part A up to this five, and now I'm gonna apply part B up to this five. So whatever you bring your part A up to, just find the corresponding number in your other side and bring it right up to that. So we're going up to the five. And now we're on the clock. It's time to mix. I just use a paint stick to mix. And I'm gonna mix for about 30 
seconds to a minute. You could add up to 5% by volume of water to thin the material out. So just start with a little at a time. We're going for the consistency of latex paint, thin latex paint. Okay, now look at it, it's perfect. Now I'll pick it up and go in. It does instantly self levels. We're ready to go. I'm gonna take my ultimate top coat and go into a clean roller tray. And I'm gonna apply it to my sink bowls first and then I'll apply it to the field, the rest of the project. So I have one wet roller and one dry roller for the sinks because it's so little, I don't really have that much to cover. Fully saturate your roller and then roll off some of the excess and then we're just gonna apply it heavy to the sink. I'm looking for even uniform coating before I grab that dry roller and begin to remove the material. I am done with that. I'm gonna grab my dry roller now. This roller has not seen the top coat and I'm gonna lightly hit the sink bowl. Just real light, taking off the excess material and then this is gonna feel like, it's gonna look like a sprayed on finish. I'm not trying to remove it all. I'm looking for a real uniform light coating on all sides of the bowl. So you almost just need to roll the entire in every direction and that is looking good I'm not seeing any lap lines in there okay boom even coating all over the surface now or field of the project and we cannot forget this little indention and the backsplash and your edges don't forget those edges this guy is done so you have a, you have a little less working time with the top coat than you do the epoxy just gonna lightly Roll the whole surface. The top coat goes on milky, but will dry 100% crystal clear. The trickiest part is this backsplash, but it's not really hard at all. Just do this. The ultimate top coat will be dry to the touch in eight to 10 hours and ready for install the next day. Tomorrow I'll be back. I'm gonna install my faucet and the tail pieces then these things are what you call a flop and drop install. Apply some glue, set it right back on. Install is complete. You just have to hook up your water supply and your tailpiece. This project's done.